Hey everybody, this is Ali uh, from the British Society of Implant Dentistry. I would like to demonstrate the placement of a dental implant on a plastic model using the OSTEM system. So before we begin, just to give you an idea of what we're going to do. So we're going to be placing a dental implant in the lower right sixth position. And um, this model is good because you can see the opposing dentition and I'll uh, show you why that's useful very shortly. We're using currently a W and H implant med motor, but there are many, many others, and I'll show you the settings that we use for that. However, there are many others. And then usually the implant's hand piece is a 20 to one reducing hand piece. Um, again, the, the, the settings differ depending on what, um, what uh, hand piece you're using, so NSK with an NSK machine or NSK with a WH machine and so on, but this you can work out when you um, speak to your manufacturers. We're using the, um, the uh, Ofstem system, the Ofstem 2 taper kit, um, but the principles that we're going to be describing here are the same for um, any implant system. The idea is merely uh, to give uh, you an idea of how things are done step by step uh, and why they're done in certain ways. And what we're describing here is analog. This is the analog method of doing things rather than the digital method, which will be in a, uh, a forthcoming video. So when we examine our implant site, obviously we have to assume here that all the groundwork is done on this assumption that the, we have enough um, ridge width for the placement of the implant. Um, there does look like there is quite a bit here actually. We're not going to do grafting or anything. Maybe on the other side at some stage we'll show you something with a bit of grafting. But when we're placing analog, what are the principles that we're trying to achieve? So what we really want to do with a molar tooth for an implant is to get the screw hole on the assumption that this is going to be a screw retained crown. We want the screw hole to be right bang in the center, but bang in the center of what? And the bang in the center of the occlusal surface in line with the long axis um, of the tooth, in line with the long axis of the curve of Mons and the curve of speed, so that when the opposing tooth hits it, when the opposing cusp, which is in this case, the mesiopalatal uh, cusp of the um, upper right six, it hits it right in that in that center, in that screw hole. So the forces are directed um, longitudinally down the implant. Is that absolutely 100% critical? To be honest, it probably isn't, as we've already seen from many, many studies about angled implants and placing implants at angulation. But in terms of biologic principle, this is the best approach. Now often, obviously this is a plastic model, but often in the mouth, we also suffer from what is called the parallax problem. So when you look at it from this angle and you think to yourself, well, where's the center? You could end up putting this, your eye will tell you that the center is here. Whereas if you come, if you turn around a little bit, you discover that the center is a little bit more to the mesial. So looking at it from this angle, often people will find, will feel that it's here. But if you look at it carefully, so yeah, you'll find that you need to come a bit further forward. Now this is a, a common novice error. I used to do this all the time when you, as with, with time, you develop the understanding that you need to bring your drill a little bit further forward if you're placing analog. Obviously the other thing is, do we place in the center of the ridge or do we take other considerations? So old school where, was where we would place in the center of the ridge. We wanted to get as much bone on the lingual side as on the buccal side. However, today's approach is prosthetic placement. So again, going back to where the screw hole will be in relationship to the, to the cusp tip of the mesiopalatal cusp of the upper six here. So doing that analog, you're effectively eyeballing where you're going to place the implant in terms of that palatal cusp tip. So what I'm using here, there are many other approaches to doing this, but what I'm using here is a rose head where I'm effectively 
assessing where the where the cusp tip will be and then making an initial pilot hole. So what we're doing now, the initial step is getting the buccolingual position of the of the osteotomy. The buccolingual position and the mesiodistal position. So buccolingually, is it in the centre of the ridge? Well kinda, but we need it also to be aligned with the cusp tip of the mesiopalatal cusp and in the buccal, uh, that's in the buccolingual position and in the mesiodistal, in this particular circumstance because we're replacing a single molar tooth, it is central. We want to have a, as much tooth on one side of the screw hole of the axis of the implant as there is on the other side of the screw hole, the axis of the implant. Okay, so I begin, if you come to the screen here, so this is my initial setting, so different uh, machines have different settings, but this is, the, this is for the implants, the 20 to 1 reducing, because that's the handpiece I'm using. And the speed I'm going at initially is 1900. It could be 1800, it could be 2000, it could be a little bit less. When we, as we progress with our osteotomy, we want to slow down, partly to harvest bone and partly so that it gives us a bit more control. And we can change that setting to say 500 or lower if we wish. And then when we come to place the implant, we change the setting to um, a torque setting. So it, re it rotates at a very slow speed um, and you can adjust the actual torque that you want it to stop at. Okay, so we come back again, we're going to set it to, obviously this can be done by foot control, to that. We're not using water here, so we come back to here and I'm going to do my initial pilot hole. I'm looking from the side to make sure that, that parallax thing doesn't get me again. I'm going to make my initial hole. So here we go. Okay, and then I would normally stop around there. This is even in real life. I would stop there and start measuring things and look in real life if I've got the right, I'd ask the patient to close and check that the that I'm sort of aligned aligned with the cusp tip of the uh, of the opposing cusp. Now, so I look at that and I'm happy with that. I look at it from an occlusal view, from the mesiodistal viewpoint, and from the buccolingual. It is in fact in this particular example it is going to be in the middle of the ridge because the plastic model has been designed like that. Now what we then like to do is to um, develop this osteotomy and to get our angle. So first of all we get the position where on the ridge is it going to start and then what we need to do is to develop our inclination, our mesial uh, sorry, our sort of anteroposterior inclination, mesodistal inclination, and then our bacolingual inc um, inclination. These these terms get confused. Angulation, inclination. The point being that you need to ensure that your um, angle is correct, basically. Now, what we're doing is we need to line this up with the axes of the roots of the neighbouring teeth. If you um, the, a common novice error is to do this. Now, why? It, watch my hand, because when we're, when we're using hand pieces on small cavities, say on this upper five, often you rotate your fingers and you're controlling it with your fingers. So you're unaware of just if there's any rotation in your movement. However, when you are inserting an implant, if you were to do this and just rely on your finger rest here and rotate on an axis with your finger, you could end up with your implant at the wrong angle, like this, because you're doing this. So we, we often ask um, young trainees when they're doing their implants to go to, to move using almost their shoulder to go in an up and down direction like that to keep, their, to keep that straight. One way of improving on that to ensure that you get it absolutely right is to use a drill extension. If there's room in the mouth, obviously, in this particular case there wouldn't be if you were trying to do a number six, doing a longer six. But this gives you even more insight into what angle you're going at as you're going up and down. 
So here we are with a pen, and the way that we do an ortho, we need to sort of understand the axis of the, of the roots so that we can line ourselves up with that. So in this case, your osteotomy will be aligned like that. Often the, the early placer will sort of get it like that, which can be at the incorrect angle. Okay, so now that I've got my initial pilot hole in that in a, in a good position, my inclination, my What I'm using here is actually a side cut drill, but you can use ideally a 2.2 pilot drill. I'm using a side cut drill because it cuts sideways as well. This on the Ostem system, in the Ostem system is a 2.2 pilot drill. Ostem system's great because it also has uh, adjusted lengths with shoulders here. So you can't go beyond the, the depth that it tells you it's gonna go. This is a seven millimeter drill which has an extra millimetre at the tip and an extra millimetre between this black line and the shoulder. So a seven millimetre drill is actually 8.5 millimetres, which means that you sink your implant. That's how the Ofstem system is designed to sink the implant by about a millimetre. So we carry on at pretty high speed in this case. And I'm going down and you'll notice that I'm trying to keep the handpiece as parallel to the lines, to the axes of the roots as possible. Again, I'm, because I've got the model flat against the, the surface here, I'm tempted to rotate my hand, to rotate it, to rotate it like this. I'm tempted to do that, but I'm trying to demonstrate keeping it really, really level and really, really straight down. And there you are. That's a seven millimeter pilot. Now, what I've done here also, if you look from above, is I've inclined it slightly to the lingual, which again is in line with this. Another way of checking the, ensuring that your sort of occlusal screw hole is in the right place is drawing an imaginary line between your, in your, in your, uh, in your head between the uh, central developmental grooves of the uh, distal tooth and the tooth medial to it so that you're sort of in in line with that too okay that's a seven millimeter now what we often do at this stage and this is whatever level of experience you're at there are numerous things you can do so first of all this is a depth gauge Again, every, every implant system provides depth gauges, and it's gauged at, you know, in this particular case, 7, 8.5, and 10. So 10 is where the black band is. So the line um, two below that is the 7 millimeter. So I insert that, and I know that I'm just, that line, that 7 millimeter line is just inside the osteotomy. So I know that my depth there, I haven't gone beyond it. So in the, in real life, obviously, this is critical that you make sure that you've not gone beyond the depth that you plan to go beyond, uh, that you plan to go to. Another thing you can do is use your paralleling pins, which again, every system will provide. And these are magic because you can then place these in and then ask the patient to close. If the osteotomy is correctly positioned, which I believe this one is, it will be aligned with the cusp tip that you want it to, to be aligned with. And also this is a depth gauge where you can then insert this and take an X-ray so you can see what angle you are in relation to the roots of the neighboring teeth. There can be confusion with the angulation. Do I align it with the roots of the neighboring teeth or don't I? And sometimes you need to take a view on that because occasionally by aligning it with the roots of the neighboring teeth, you may end up with too far of an inclination or a, an angulation, which may make it difficult to slot in to insert the crown. 